Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, what we're talking about today, and it's an important subject, especially in this area because of the Hurricane Helene. I've talked to so many people and they, they're out, they want to sell. Right, okay. Whether they got destroyed or not, but especially the people that you know destroyed their houses. Yeah. But there's other people that just can't take the ups and downs of the weather in Florida. So there's more competition, especially in certain areas, especially because of insurance and, you know, and just the cost of living in certain areas. Right. So we have competition and hurdle. Right. So before, during the pandemic, it was pretty easy to sell your house. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's why there's so many realtors. It's like free money. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was 2% interest, 1% interest. I mean, come on. Yeah, so it was um, it was just too easy. Yep. And now that's why there's less, you know, realtors, less home inspectors, less everything because now the market is becoming more competitive. But a lot of these people are asking, how do I beat them? How how can I sell my house? Especially some of them really need to get out or really want to get out. Mm -hmm. You know, the, is there a is there a secret formula? And at the end, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the biggest thing, but I'm not a realtor, you're the realtor. So, but in the meantime, okay. do me a favor, consider subscribing, it really helps out the channel, it's greatly appreciated, share and give it a thumbs up. Bill, what do you tell people? Like, what's like the biggest thing? Well, I'll give you a list of things that I think that they should do to the house as an inspector. Yeah, but that's not going to help sell the house a lot of times. Right. That's that's inspection stuff. So right. there's let's just there's not one thing. There's multiple things mm -hmm. because you could have an absolutely gorgeous house, everything's perfect and pristine on it, and if you overprice it by a hundred thousand dollars, it doesn't matter. Agree, one hundred percent. So let's just kind of like go, so we don't jump all over the place. We'll kind of start hitting down. Start with an experienced realtor. And not only an experienced realtor, I would say a realtor that connects with you. Like that you kind of matches like your style or just, you, you, you're gonna be working with this individual a lot. So make sure that you can deal with that person, that their style is what you like. So meaning, you know, you like that, I'm not gonna get into all the marketing and da 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 da, but you know, just make sure that you jive with the realtor. That's the easiest way to say it. You know, and that they have experience. Now, that doesn't mean that, oh, that realtor sold, you know, 600 houses last year. No. Because that realtor didn't sell 600 houses. They're the face of the team. The team that sold, that 600. sold 600 houses. The other 20 agents did that. Um, so let, let me ask you this. Should they pick somebody that they trust, like a relative? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even have to think about that one. The, the reason why I'm saying it's that, hard. It, the reason why I'm saying that is everybody has a relative that's a realtor. Of course, that's a very difficult position to put your family in. Mm -hmm. It really is, unless you're so nonchalant and just like, "Hey, listen, just sell this thing for me. Like, I don't care." That's different. Mm -hmm. But when you start mixing that business and pleasure kind of thing, sometimes it can get a little sticky. Like I said, there's always the unique situation for somebody when like i said it's if they're very nonchalant and they're just like whatever then yeah heck yeah you know and then remember everybody's got to get a start somewhere so usually it's your friends and family <laughs> yeah but <laughs> I, they have more tolerance yeah but i you know i worked with a lot of realtors that they're selling the house for their cousin or sister brother you know and they really don't know what they're doing it's, it happens a lot, um, you know, and you do, you just, there's, there's so much that goes into a real estate transaction and w people just don't understand that. And it's, the thing is, when you have an experienced agent and everything goes smoothly, you're like, oh, well, that was easy. I don't, you know, because the job of the agent is to do the work for you. That's why you hired them. You hired them to head off problems before their problems and then deal with problems when they are problems. Yeah. So do you want, that's the point. There's, there's stuff that goes on that doesn't need permission necessarily from you or it's an update to you like, hey, this is happening. This is what I think we should do. This is how we would handle this. Yeah, that's really important. So Bill, let's talk about 
the presentation, you said the I walked into the houses that you just described, like mm -hmm. the perfect house. This is perfect. That's perfect. Everything is perfect. Then I walk in, and I walked into the house and it has this smell. <laughs> you know, is it of baking cookies? No, oh, it's, okay. it's like old food or dog. You know, and don't get me wrong, I like dogs. You know, and cats, but you know, it has like a really heavy dog smell. Let's talk about that. Just a pet, a pet, pet smell. Yeah. That turns off some people. Of course it is, because people know that that's probably not going to go away anytime soon. Just just think about it when you walk into a store. You know, if you walk into a store or a restaurant and it smells funny, you're probably not going to be as likely to stay or continue to shop there or eat there. Same thing. Presentation is everything. So, I mean, we can kind of go down some presentation stuff. Yeah. So not only free from smells and clutter is number one. Listen, you know, I love clutter. to cook oh and God. like if I was selling my house, I would make sure that I aired it out, didn't cook, you know, like a super heavy garlic, fresh garlic meal, you know, the night before so kind of thing. It's like when you guys go into homes, or you guys looking to buy homes and you walk in there and you see like all these scented machines in every outlet in every room, yeah. that's what... Well, that's what yeah. they do, you know? They yeah. put a heavy amount of scents in there. Yeah, so just, I mean, it's it's obvious. You know, everybody, now I made the baked cookies because, you know, it's inviting and, you know, they people do baked cookies at open yeah, houses yeah. and things so, like that. But it, my, general, my favorite candle, by the way, is cookies and cream, mm -hmm. Yankee candle. I love that oh, yeah. candle. Oh, it makes me, and it makes me hungry, yeah. you know? And uh, like pumpkin spice and all yeah. the other stuff that comes out. Yeah, so anyway, so... <laughs> Presentation, declutter your house. You want to de, it's, you're selling your house and you're packing your stuff and you're going to be leaving. So remember, declutter. The de more open your house feels. Declutter to the way of take the pictures off the walls and put them away or take stuff like toys, everything, put them in storage. When you say declutter, you're saying just clean up or literally take stuff out of the house if it's too crowded. So you don't want to take so many things off the wall that it looks weird right family photos and stuff think about it if you went to a model house or you opened like a better homes and gardens magazine and you see the tours things like that houses that are staged they're very open very clean minimal there's things that are accent photos so instead of having all those trinkets on the hall stand those trinkets need to go away and then you have something you know like maybe three candles there instead or a photo and the two candles, something along those lines. It just, you, you want to make it you open. You said something interesting. So a lot of these homes here in Florida too, you know, they're empty. The people already moved and they want their house for, for sale yep. and it's empty. Now, what sells better, a uh, empty house or a house with furniture? So you, you mentioned staging. Could you explain what staging is? Yeah, so once you move out of your house, uh, a lot of times, staged houses will sell better because people can visualize things in the house and the purpose of getting rid of the personal photos and personal things as much as you can a lot of the toys you know it's like my friends that have kids i there's toys when i go to their house those things i haven't they haven't moved since last christmas you know those are the things you need to get rid of mm -hmm. get them out of the way recycle them something along the lines they don't need to be in the house when you're trying to sell it because you're trying like when you take your car in to sell your car Everybody waxes it, washes it, vacuums it, you know, more than they've ever done. Right. That's what you need to do to your house. That's your biggest asset. So you need to do the same thing to your house. Mm -hmm. And if you leave and you want to, staging can be expensive to rent the furniture and stuff. They're staging companies. They come in, they're designers, they, they stage the house. But people walk in and they go, oh, this is awesome. Look how nice this house is. They can picture themselves in the house. Yeah even if it's not their furniture but and then if you don't do staging which is fine because there's homes that you just people don't stage but make sure it's clean scrub the baseboards scrub the walls fill the holes or paint it's cheap to paint and paint the house make it look nice but what, what do you do for the houses when they're just dark and gloomy well that's a good one so usually what i'll try to get people to do is uh get new light bulbs so get daylight bulbs. That's smart. Because it brightens the house up, you know? So when you go get those LED bulbs at the 5,500 Kelvin, it'll say, it'll be like a blue 
line on the, if you go to like uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, any mm -hmm. of those hardware store types, you'll see it. It'll say daylight bulb. Those are very bright, so it mimics what you're seeing out in the sun. So it gives the house a, a much brighter feel. You know, they're, the, the other bulbs are more warm, so they have that more uh, yellowy, brownish tinge to it. And those, the daylight bulbs are just brighter. So let's talk about this one, okay? So you, you, they say somebody did all that other stuff, okay? But they, and people that are looking at, you know, walking in there and seeing all that, and they say, oh, we love this house. But I think that you should do a pre-sale inspection, okay? I think it's important because a lot of deals could die right after the inspection. If the repairs are easy to do. 100%. Corroded water heater, you know, old air conditioner, you know, old roof. Right. So, in those situations where you mentioned, let's talk about the roof and the air conditioner. So, there's a lot of different things that you can do there. But a pre, I, I agree with you. A pre-listing inspection is is good. Now, maybe you go. Well, I don't build. I, I don't have the money to put a new roof on and to put an AC on. In, in, All right. right. Yeah. So but there's ways you can offer that in your deal so when you when you're marketing it just as a as a snapshot you know without getting into the actual real logistics of it but let's just say hey listen uh we understand that the roof is needs to be replaced we can negotiate that into the deal and then you know when you give us so an are, you, are you saying to be upfront about the roof before you even find a buyer saying, okay, we're willing to do this. Well, that's where I say there's strategy. You have okay. to decide what you want to do. Do you want to get in front of it and say, hey, look, we're willing to deal with this. We know that this is happening. We're willing to put a new roof on once we strike a deal. That's important and I'll tell you why. So basically I did an inspection and the water heater was corroded. It wouldn't pass the insurance inspection, mm -hmm. the four point. So they went back and they told the buyers that they, the, they want them to fix the water heater. So they wanted $3,000 off the deal for a water heater that costs $700. It's pretty normal. So if you know the water heater is going to be bad, is it better to pay the $700 up front than try to negotiate $3,000 off? Right. So on a water heater that's, you know, uh, probably anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 by the time you buy the water heater, hire the plumber to do it and all that stuff. $1,500 is a lot better than $3,000 because typically what happens is once you start negotiating concessions and things like that for repairs after the inspection, it's just a list of things. You know, hey, listen, we're, we, we want, we're, we've identified these 10 items and we don't want you to repair them or we want that repaired, but everything else, we just want $5,000, you know, off the, our originally negotiated price. That's why I say there's different strategies and different things for each house. When it's a, a roof, what you would typically do is you would offer to put the roof on and then you would get a roofing company to come out, give you the bid, get everything squared away contractually, everything is, is copacetic, but then they would put the roof on either just prior to closing or after closing, depending on what you negotiate, and then they would get paid from the proceeds of the closing. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the bad thing is if for some reason the deal falls apart, you want to do that towards the latter part of the deal, because if the deal falls apart, you're on the hook for the $15,000 or whatever the, the replacement cost of the roof is, because the roofer wants his money. So, Bill, let's, I want you to recap a little bit, okay, because you, you said a lot. So, mm -hmm. basically, in order, the secrets of selling your house quick, you know, or selling your house better than anybody else in the neighborhood because if a lot of people are selling, price, right? Right, so let's go, we'll recap, like you, okay. like you said. Light and bright, depersonalize, declutter. Clean up, pressure wash the driveway and the sidewalks in the house, get it clean pressure wash your back deck, et cetera. Consider a pre-listing inspection. Um, then you're gonna move into price. Price your house correctly. That's what, that's what, remember I told you guys at the beginning, I'm gonna say what's the big thing is the price. Cause here's the mistake I see a lot of people making. And maybe you don't agree with me, but I think they like, okay, we want, Five hundred thousand for the house, mm -hmm. okay, but 
that's where we'll settle. But let's let's put it at six hundred thousand. See if we have any bites, and then let's put it at five seventy. Then let's put it at five fifty. You know, like let's try a really really high price to see if anybody's going to walk here. It's such a bad, and I, I'm getting this. I'm hearing this from realtors. What do you want to list it for? That's fine. We'll try that for a few weeks. It's called buying your listing. It's a bad, bad thing. I, I think it's not the smartest strategy. It shows that well. What's wrong with this house that they keep lowering the price? Right. So there's a couple things. Number right. one, just being listed high. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking because so there's strategy. So you can go. You want to list higher in the market, right? A little bit higher in the market. That's a strategy. Right. That way, you know, hey, they're going to negotiate down, right? Mm -hmm. This is not going to the mall and getting a sale. Right. This is not retail mentality. That's the people put retail into real estate. It doesn't work that way. So you can price your home proud a little bit, right? So it's like I can see where you you know you're bouncing between some numbers. Then you can price your or you can price your house at market value right there on the line where every other house is selling or you can price it a little bit below market value and then hopefully stimulate because people go holy smokes look at the deal yeah but um, that's what you said a little bit below the market value because i've seen a lot of times those houses sold for more than they wanted at the end because you then you have multiple people looking at that house right so you don't want to go crazy low because no. there's rules against that number yeah. one yeah and number two that just doesn't make sense because you know you could also shoot yourself in the foot with that but you go a little bit below because it creates intrigue and and a, a could be a bidding war per se so you're going to generate more you know that's if you've got a really premium property and then you might get more than you really want it to if you price it right median those are the three strategies and then you're going to generate if you price it high and you go crazy high, like you said, and people want to come down, and then you're chasing everybody else down. Yeah. And another thing, too, if you're putting your house up for sale, you know, and so this is the reason why I'm bringing this up is because there's one person that's selling their house, and every time there was somebody going there with the realtor to look at it, they would stay in the house and they would just be doing whatever they're doing cooking or oh no 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 no! you, you gotta leave you have to leave <laughs> you gotta leave listen I, I've shown some houses where the people were handicapped yeah and they had to stay yeah that's not different. a problem that's not a problem but you know take you worry about it take your valuables out you know just take out but that stuff shouldn't be out in the first place no you are selling your house you don't want photos of your rings and jewelry and all this other stuff in the listing photos all that you're you're leaving you're gonna have people in your house that's why you have a realtor there also but when you have, you just don't want those items out. You really don't. We're decluttering, de depersonalizing everything. But price is so important. Price, price is, is so important because people think if the house keeps getting lowered, why, why, why is this getting lowered? And then they're like, well, now you're desperate. Yeah, yeah. That's, then, then, they're gonna, then they're gonna lowball you. They're gonna lowball you. Anyways, that's today's video. You know, the secrets of how to sell your home. Do you have anything else to add? Nope, I think we're good. I mean, I could talk about this for pitfalls and things that I've seen. And not forever. for nothing, but <laughs> you guys could reach out to Bill and, you know, he'll answer any questions. Just he'll give you guys a call, whatever. Just yeah, it's not just about trying to get a listing. It's just the point of this channel and why we talk about things just so you're educated and you understand, you know, what's going on. And it, yeah. I'm happy to, ha I love having conversations. Do me a favor, watch this video over here. I picked it out just for you guys. And do me a favor, subscribe. I know I keep saying that, but it's kind of important and it's really motivation for us. Thank you and have a great day. See you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.